Hello, I'm Butch Curry from Zombie Nirvana Games. Welcome to the third installment of Fantasy Cartography with Adobe Photoshop, the podcast where I give you some of my favorite tips, tricks, and techniques to create cool maps for your role-playing games. In our first two episodes, we created this aged paper background to build our map on. Now we're going to jump right into something really fun as we start to add some forest to it. So let's get started. There are a lot of different ways you could add a forest to a map like this. Uh, the one that I really prefer for this particular style involves creating a custom pattern and then turning that into a pattern a fill or adjustment layer. There are a lot of advantages to using patterns and pattern layers in your map making. They give you a lot of flexibility and they can save you time because you can use them over and over again. With just a little bit of extra work, you can make it look as though you've drawn hundreds and hundreds of trees, uh, when really you've only drawn a few dozen. In order to make our pattern, we're going to start by creating a new document. I'm just going to close this and get out of the way. Hit Control N to make a new document. Uh, as you can see, it's not very big. It's only one inch by one inch. But we want it to be a pretty high resolution. That's going to give us a lot of that flexibility later on. It's going to allow us to scale the pattern up and down without losing any of our image quality. Uh, the pattern's only going to be in black and white anyway, so we can work in grayscale. Just going to click on OK. To draw this in, I'm just going to use a 9 pixel hard edged brush, nothing fancy. And right here in the middle of the document, I'm just going to start drawing in some treetops. Now we want to make sure that this is going to tile seamlessly later. So we want to make sure that you always work in the middle of the document. Don't work all the way out here, all the way to the edge. After you've gotten a few treetops drawn in, you can go ahead and start to offset it to create the tiling effect. We're going to do that by coming up to Filter, down to Other, and over to Offset. I'm going to pull this over to the side here so you can see how that is moved over. I'm going to bump these up so you can really see what's happening as it wraps around. See, make sure you've got wrap around selected there for the undefined areas. And it takes those treetops that we've drawn and moves them over 300 pixels to the right, 300 pixels down. Wraps them around the edges. That's going to make that seamless tiled effect that we'll need to create the pattern. I'm going to turn this back down to a hundred, about 150 by about 150. That's going to give me a good offset and give me a nice clear space in the middle. So after you've offset it, just come back over here, start adding more treetops. Now I'm not going to make you sit through the whole process as I fill this up with treetops. I'm just going to pause the video and continue to draw using the draw and offset, draw and offset. And we're back! As you can see, I've almost finished, uh, but I came back a little bit early just so I could share with you a couple of my favorite time-saving tricks. Uh, the first one is, if you want to use the same filter that you've been using over and over again, like I have been while I've been filling these trees in, you can just hit Control F. That'll run the same filter with the same settings. So you can go back in and start drawing a few more treetops in. If you want to run the same filter but with different settings, you can hit alt Control f That will bring your filter dialog back up. and You can put in whatever settings you want. Pretty neat. So I'm just going to draw these last few treetops in, just like that. You can spend as much time as you want to making these treetops look really nice. Uh, this obviously is just something kind of quick and dirty I threw together. Now in order to turn this into a pattern, we're going to come up here to Edit, then down to Define Pattern. Surprise, surprise. We're going to call this Forest, and hit OK. And we'll just put this out of the way. Now we're going to bring our map back up. There we are. We're going to add our pattern layer to this map by coming over here to the Layers palette, to the Add, Fill, or Adjustment Layer button. You've seen me use this one a lot in the last couple of episodes. And come up here to Pattern. And you can see the pattern we just created will automatically be the one that pops up. 
This is obviously too big, so we're just going to scale it down. We'll bring it down to about 25%. See how that looks. Now we can't see through it yet. We're just going to come up here and change the blend mode to multiply. That'll take away all the white areas and just leave the black tree outlines. Just like that. Now you can go back in. You can always change the scale. If you decide it's too big or too small, take it down to 20%. See how those treetops look on your map and see if they're the scale that you want. I'm going to leave it at about 25. That was about right. Just like that. Now obviously we don't want to have trees all over the entire map. We just want to have them in a few select areas. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the layer mask and invert it. Turn it from white to black just by hitting control I. And now the forest is gone. But we can very easily put it right back in just by switching to our brush, making sure that the foreground color is white, and painting on this layer mask. And that will just paint the forest right back in wherever we want it to go. You can go around wherever you want on your map and add forest with just a few brush strokes, like magic. Just like that. Now we're going to zoom in up here on the corner where we're going to be adding some forest up here. A little too much. Zoom back out. It's just going to come in just like that. There we go. Get my brush back. And I'm going to put a little more forest in here just to kind of show you how some of this is going to work. Uh, now obviously we don't want the forest to show through this tear in the paper. With our brush we can shrink it down, switch back to black by hitting X, and just paint it out like that. Now something that I like to do when I'm using a pattern like this is to neaten up the edges of the forest. And the way that I do that is just by keeping black as the foreground color. I'm going to zoom in pretty close switch back to my brush and then I just kinda come around the edges here and just paint back until I get to the natural line this natural edge wherever it happens to fall and just take off these little bits that are sticking out I'm just gonna hit the space bar to get my hand move up a little bit back to my brush if you decide you you've cut off a little bit too much, you can just hit X, switch back to white, paint a little more back in, maybe add an extra tree, just like that, then switch back to black, take the edges off, all the little pointy bits, just like that. When we zoom back out, you can see how that's created a more natural edge along the tree line here. Normally I'd spend a lot more time going through and uh, fixing the edges and neatening them up, but you, you get the idea. Next week, we'll add the finishing touches to our forest when we look at creating custom brushes and adding color to our map. In the meantime, make sure to check out ZombieNirvana.com for more information about this podcast, my upcoming book, Fantasy Cartography with Adobe Photoshop, and weekly Photoshop tips posted every Tuesday. Thanks for listening, and happy mapping! Will you go, lassie, will you go?